if you think that I'm wearing the same outfit in the video from last week, why are you judging me? By the time this video hopefully comes out, it ha would have been a month since I was in Portland, Oregon for the Portland Retro Gaming Expo. I went with Shiny Wave, Spacey Invader, Stone and Oak, and Voodoo Beef. <laughs> I said that in alphabetical order. <laughs> so I was flying out of New York by myself because I am the furthest away. Took a trip to JFK, got there early because getting into the airport is always the most nerve wracking for me. Like I just need to get to my gate. Not even to my gate, but like I, I'd like to know where my gate is, but I just need to get past security because in my head the whole time, if my flight home gets messed up, that's fine. I can figure that out, the trip is already over. But if my flight there gets messed up, it will ruin everything. Cause I didn't give myself time for like a day. To, no, I was in Portland from Friday to Sunday. That was it. Was that smart? Uh, so my flight, I picked the cheapest flight that I could find. I was a single person, so it didn't matter what seat I had. I was really hoping not to get a middle seat, but I was just like, fill me in, make the flight cheaper. Fill me in, I'm little. I can fit basically anywhere you put me. So I didn't select my seat, it was selected for me. I got the back of the plane, the last row by the bathrooms. <laughs> But it ended up being perfect because there was nobody behind me. And one of the things that drives me nuts is when the person behind me keeps messing with their tray. I try to be as gentle as possible when like taking the tray down, but people just like shake that shit. So the fact that I had a wall behind me, I was in this little corner to myself, cause not to mention I had the window seat and there was nobody in between me and the other person. So it was the like perfect spot because I was just, tucked in, nobody had to look at me. I could just ignore the world. Yeah, I was by the bathrooms. That led to a game that I have now called French soup or farts. <laughs> There was a point where, like, it, never, it didn't smell bad for a while. And then mid-flight, people, that's when the line built up. You know, when they hand out those snacks, they hit, they hit. You gotta prepare yourself. My sense of smell is really messed up. It has been my entire life. Sometimes I can't smell anything. Sometimes I could smell everything. Sometimes my nose takes the thing and turns it into something else. For example, there was a day my mom was sauteing onions. I come out of my room and I smell blueberry muffins. I got really excited for the muffins. I was kind of disappointed. <laughs> At one point I was like, oh, it smells like somebody must have ordered food because I'm smelling like French onion soup. Wait, I don't think they offer French onion soup on this plane. Is that farts? <laughs> I, I think it was farts, but I smelled French onion soup for most of it, which I would take. Arguably, some people might think that French onion soup smells like farts. So luckily on this flight, I did have Wi-Fi, so I was able to keep in touch with everybody, which was very helpful because I've never been to Portland before. I'm pretty good at navigating things. I get nervous as hell and anxiety peaks a lot, but also my sense of direction and control peak at the same time. So like half of me is panicking and the other half is like, I got this. We can panic after we're done. Helpful, I guess. <laughs> so I was keeping in touch and my flight got there early and the way that the flight attendants explained like we're gonna get there early they explained it kind of weird so i you know messaged the group and i was like oh apparently we're landing in 30 minutes and it was like no it was going to be 30 minutes until we started to do the landing process they said it weird or i understood it wrong i don't know either way i gave my friends the wrong information and then things started to get a little chaotic but it ended up working out in the end and our timing was perfect once we were all together, we headed to the hotel we were staying at and about five minutes or so after, that's when Stone showed up. And then we all chilled for a little while <laughs> because the two of us, well, Spacey and Voodoo got there the day before, I believe. And so Stone and I got there on Friday around the same time. And we had just both traveled about seven hours, me flying, him driving. So we all just kind of chilled for a little while. But then we also, you know, decided that we, we should go get our badges and explore a little bit of that. So we had over to the convention center which was only two stops from where we were staying went to the convention center went got our badges it was nice super quick easy no big deal these are the badges 
which is really freaking cool. I love that they did that with the 13th because it was a Friday the 13th. So I love that they played into that. There's the information. So yeah, you could see here Friday, they had an arcade. That was the only thing that you were able to go to. So we went and we checked that out. They had so many different games. I forget the company. I'll have to look it up and insert it somewhere here of the company that like provided all of the arcade machines that were there. But there were so many. There was a Tetris tournament going on. There was a shit ton of CRT set up with all sorts of systems. And I was like, do you think I could speed run Resident Warriors? And I was like, we got our hands on some of the arcade games. They were all free, all free to use, which was awesome. So we played a little bit. Stone and I played some Mortal Kombat. He beat me the first time. I kicked his ass with Liu Kang the second time. It was amazing. <laughs> I forget what other games we played. Not a crazy amount because there was a decent amount of people there, even though it was just Friday. We were still tired from traveling and everything. We, we walked around a little bit, but we also didn't want to stay for too, too long. We also... We also did have a reservation to go to a karaoke place. So we were keeping that in mind. We needed to go get some food and go do some karaoke because that's what you do with your friends. Unfortunately for me, I wasn't feeling the best. So my appetite was shot. So I didn't eat anything at the place that we went. It was some, I believe, Japanese local place. Half the food was good and half the food was not. I tried a little bit of the food that was not so good and it was very salty. So we walked around, before we landed on going to that place, we walked around to view what places we would go to that were by this karaoke place and they landed on that one. It was raining. It wasn't really cold, but it was like definitely like this is your typical like Portland style in a movie type weather, which I was very excited about because, you know, that's kind of what I wanted. I wanted it to be moody and rainy. So after the food, we went to the karaoke place. I will show you some of the stuff. Uh, obviously, I have to mute it because one, copyright and two, what you sing in karaoke stays in karaoke. It was a lot of fun. I could not think of a song to sing. So the first one I did was Shadow Boxer by Fiona Apple. <laughs> Which arguably I sing all the time. So, you know, that one was fair. My picks were kind of all over the place. Coconuts by Kim Petras. In the End with Stone, you know, from Linkin Park. We all kind of sang Scream, Alanis Morissette, which was wonderful. Misery Business by Paramore. That was another one I did. It was a lot of fun. So that was Friday night. Saturday, we headed to the convention. We saw a lot, a lot. There was so much. It was just so many games. So many games. Like, I mean, that's the point, but like, oh my God, it was nuts. We saw so many copies of Chrono Trigger, a few copies of Earthbound, I think about two or three copies of Rule of Rose. Like these are top price games. Chrono Trigger, we saw mainly out of box. We saw one complete in box Earthbound. I don't know if that was the only one we saw or not. Lots and lots and lots of Ocarina of Times, all sorts of handhelds, just you name it, it was there. Somebody had it. They had like bins that just had games tossed in it so you could rummage through it. Like I saw Chrono Cross a few times, endless Final Fantasy games, so much stuff. Let me show you what I bought. You're gonna be like, Harley, you barely got anything. And yeah, I did barely get anything, but I also knew in the back of my mind that once Stone and I went back to Canada, we had had a trade planned for stuff that we already owned. So I knew that I wasn't gonna come home with just these three things. I knew I was gonna get some more stuff. And I'd rather trade with friends versus buying, you know, especially cause like we both had doubles of stuff or we just had stuff that had been given to us or whatever that we didn't care about, but the other one did. Anyway, first thing I bought, I believe was this. Normally I wouldn't have gotten something like this, but I figured this was probably the best way for me to make my Ocarina of Time a complete in box. I haven't even thumbed through it yet. It's still in its plastic, but I got the instruction booklet. So now all I need is the cardboard because I don't mind if I don't have the full, full set, but I would like to have the cardboard box because I just have the raw ass cart and it's one of the very original ones that has the chanting and the blood and the moon and star box and everything. It's very special to me. So I saw this and I was like, oof, $20. And I didn't even think about it. I was just like, here you go. I had the cash. Here you go. Just take it. Just take it because I don't want to think about it and then not get it and then be really upset because it's an amazing condition because I saw a few of them you know there were things that were wrong with it. it has a few creasings in it because I had to bring it home the corners are in perfect condition there's not really that much creasing on the spine nothing the next thing I got and I still haven't tested it it's been basically a month and I still have yet to test it my RF cables make the TV look like it's sparkling there's still a connection it still works but it twinkles and I know it's not my TV because my RF adapter for my N64 doesn't do that 
I should have bought the official one. They had one that was like in box. I didn't realize at that time before I found this that it had an adapter so I could make it so that my GameCube and my Wii could also play on the CRT. Maybe one day if I can find another one, I'll get that adapter too. But it's just, this is the Super Nintendo. I don't know, you can see it has the S NES. The guy that I, well, let me backtrack for a second. Stone knew that I wanted, this was like the main thing that I was looking for. So we were walking by this one table and he's like, oh, hey, look, there's a box of cables. Maybe your thing is in there. And I was like, oh, okay, let me go look. And I was looking through it. There wasn't a lot of stuff in it, but as I was looking through it, I was like, Man, it's not gonna be in here. This is such a random cable. And I found it. I would like to buy this, hi. And the guy didn't even like really know what it was. And then he was trying to explain to me what it was. And he's like, oh, it's an original. And I was like, I know it's the Super Nintendo one. I have both of them, but I need a replacement. And like, he had no idea what he was talking about. He charged me 10 bucks. I should have tried to get him to charge me five cause he didn't even know what he had. Anyway, the final thing I got, I wasn't even thinking about getting. I just happened to find it in one of the rummage bins, $23, which again, arguably, I don't know if I should have spent the money on this, but I have been tested so many times recently about my Zelda collection, and I'm tired of saying the few games that I don't own because they're duplicates. They're just from a different system. Well, now, one less do I have to say because I have Zelda 2 on Game Boy Advance. No, it's not complete in box, but neither is my Zelda 1. I don't care that much. I just need to have the game. Moving on, they had set up a Blockbuster area because Blockbuster was sponsoring part of the convention or something like that. They had a whole blockbuster area set up. They had movie racks, posters, candies and things. They had a whole couch set up. It was playing Mrs. Doubtfire. It was awesome to see all of that because they had DVDs and VHSs. I don't know if it was all just for show or if you could actually buy the things that were on display. I didn't ask because I didn't care, but it was really cool to see. We left because we also had a shoe store that we needed to head to. We went to the dock store. Spacey had bought a pair on on Thursday, wore them out, feet are bleeding. So then Stone bought a pair himself finally, which were really nice. So they, they bought their shoes, he put them on, we went and we got pizza. After the dock store and the food, we went to this anime shop that was really cool. It was like a stationary anime shop. That's, that's usually how they are. They had like models and stuff too. So like they had like a bunch of paints and things. And like I said, a lot of stationary pens, things like that. It was really cool. The rows of manga that they had there. I almost bought this one that I have been wanting for over a year now. Why do I want to buy this book that's going to take up space? So I left it. After the anime shop and everything like that, we were headed back to the hotel. And that's when disaster hit. We get onto the light train. We only needed to go two stops. Two stops to the hotel from where we were let off because we headed back to the convention center after the anime store because that's just how the trains worked. Two stops was all we needed. We could barely make it to one. As we get on to this light rail, we're all in good spirits. We're having fun. We just had a great day. We're gonna go back and decompress because we did have some plans for later on that evening. The train comes, we get on, and we regret it. We should have went to a different car, but we didn't think that fast. We all sit down and we all almost throw up. There, in the back, right by us, sits a man that reeks of fecal matter. So there we are sitting on the train, doors closed. We have no place to go. I look over at Stone and I say one stop and he shakes his head. All of us are sitting closer to each other to try and stop the smell from getting into our nose holes. I look over at everybody else and I go one stop and with a quick nod, we all agreed. We are getting off of this train. It was the most foul smell in the world. As soon as we were approaching, we all stood up and stood by that door and got out as fast as possible. The toxic air that came out of the car as the doors opened, it was the most disgusting thing in the world. And God damn, was that fresh air so sweet once we got out of the train. We only had to walk a little bit. So we could have, if we would have smelt it sooner, like before the doors closed and realized how severe it was, I think we all would have jumped off and just walked it. But we were tired from walking all day, which is why we got onto the train as it was. Cause it is only two stops. It's not that big of a deal. Oh boy, that was, that was something else. Anyway, once we got back to the hotel and like cleared our nose holes from the stank that 
you know, it was residue up in there. We were all looking at the stuff that we had gotten and, you know, just talking about what we saw because we did kind of split off. It wasn't intentional. That's just kind of what happened. Stone and I kind of went off. Facey Voodoo and Shiny kind of went off. I believe they stayed together most of the time, just as we did. And it's just because we kind of got separated and it was kind of like, yeah, okay, whatever, we'll meet back up. Both parties thought that we were going to run into each other a lot sooner than we did and we didn't, which was weird. But we eventually did meet back up prior to us leaving. So we were all exhausted and we decided that we didn't feel like going to where we were going to go. So we picked a different place to go to to eat. It was another dumpling-esque type place. This time I got some gyoza. It was good. It was a rainy day again and we sat outside but there was a cover. It was a nice like ending of the day. And then the following day, Sunday, the last day of the expo and the day that we are leaving, Stone and I, we were leaving about two o'clock-ish. That's when we were gonna start driving back to Canada. We wanted to go to the convention again for a little while because we had time. It was still the morning. The thing was just opening. So we get dressed, go downstairs. Stone and I put our bags and whatnot in the car just so we get that out of the way. And we get to the bus stop, not the bus stop, the train stop. And we're joking about, well, at least we won't see Poop Man again because like, what are the odds? There's, there's no way, like whatever. One should not speak of Poop Man. If you speak of Poop Man, Poop Man appears. We get onto the train and we go, oh God, except not out loud. But we all just kind of went, like we got slapped in the face. We swear he's following us at this point. But this time we thought quickly and went to the other side of the car, which didn't smell nearly as bad. But there he was in the back corner. Poop man, still ripe with fecal matter. It was actually quite odd because it was the same exact car. Like what are the odds that we caught the same exact train and went into the same exact car? But it's like, like real, real talk for a second. You would think that, you know, the people that run the train and everything would escort this person off because of the horrid smell. But no, he was still there. He, he was still there. We went to the other side of the car, which smelled a lot less. And then we did our two stops and got off and we were like, how in the holy hell did we meet up with this person again? How did we time that? We cursed ourselves with the poop man. <laughs> But after that event, we went and we got some coffee at the hotel coffee shop because it was a hotel that was by the convention center. So we went and we got some coffee there. I got a small. When I ordered the small, the person was like, are you sure? Because it was little. And I was like, yep, that's all I want. Which I thought was really funny because she's like, this is the size of our small. And I was like, this is the size of my small. <laughs> Once we were done with our coffee, cause we sat down and we like, some of them had some food. So they ate, we just chilled. We were talking about the experiences over the weekend. Then we decided to head to the convention, which was right across the street. We weren't waiting very long till they opened the doors. We got in, we started perusing. There were certain items people were looking for that they were like, okay, today I want to try and get these things. I'm pretty sure on Sundays when I bought this, because I was like, I'm not leaving this place with just an instruction booklet and an RF switch. There wasn't anything that I regret not getting, to be perfectly honest, because I didn't know what I wanted. And I don't want to just buy just to have. For one thing that we were definitely on the hunt for, we saw this extreme green, I believe, Game Boy Pocket. Stone had been looking for a Game Boy Pocket for a while, and we saw an extreme green one, and it was, it seemed like it was in really good condition, but we couldn't remember where it was. So the hunt started. We were all trying to find it, like try to remember where it was. And eventually we found it and he bought it, which he was very happy about. It's a beautiful, beautiful set. I am so jealous because it is this like neon green, Game Boy Pocket and it is beautiful and I want it. <laughs> so after we decided that we were basically done looking at all the games, we went to the Nintendo Power history section because they had his whole section set up with all like cover art and things, which was really cool to look at. They had like the original drawings and how they converted them into like the covers. They had models of like the Mario from like the first one, I think, maybe not the first one. One of the ones that had like that clay Mario on it. They also had a section where you could adopt cats, which was interesting. But then as we were leaving that area, there was a Game Boy camera set up and you could pay to get a picture. So Stone and I decided to get a picture printed from this Game Boy camera. So we took a picture, we got it printed. It looks hilarious from, it's like one of those, you look at it further away and then you're like, oh my God, it's the two of you. That was the end of our expo experience. Then we we went to the train again and we're like, 
God, third time's a charm, maybe? I don't know, because we needed to head back to the hotel, because that's when we decided that we were going to head out. And we get on the train, and it's a different train. It's an older train. There's no way that it's going to be Poop Man train. And we sit down or whatever, and I, I look down to, like, the front of the car, and I see this other man, and he's got, like, a cart, like, a shopping cart, and, like, a bunch of stuff in it or whatever. But then I see, like, smoke. Am I seeing that correctly? Is that guy burning incense? <laughs> Turns out he was, in fact, burning incense. So Incense Man is out there to stop Poop Man in his tracks, or on the tracks. And as we were walking past once we got off, we could, yes, you could see his cart, you could see that it was two sticks of incense being burned, and we were like, at least we ended on a nice smelling note. <laughs> So once we got back to the hotel, we like ran upstairs so we could freshen up before hitting the road. And then we went to the parking garage, said our goodbyes, which still, I, I hate doing that. I did not want to leave any of them. We said goodbye and then we hit the road to Canada. I didn't really record much. Well, I didn't really record much in general because it's kind of that balance of trying to live in the moment and appreciate everything that's going on versus like being like this. I didn't really record much in Canada intentionally because of where I was. I was staying at Stone's place and I didn't want to record surrounding areas by his apartment, but it was beautiful there. The drive there was really nice. Going through the border was interesting. It was really quick though. I think it's because it was a Sunday night. The woman just rapid fire asked us both questions it was pouring the entire time i was there it, it cleared up a little bit sometimes i also didn't care because it just felt so cozy the leaves were all changing colors and there was leaves on the ground it wasn't super cold or anything like that and like i said the rain did stop we went on a bunch of walks we did go to a coffee shop that he regulars i ordered a latte and i just i ordered a small <laughs> and once again they were like this is the small Are you sure that that's what you want? And I'm like, yes. <laughs> like, why is that the theme of this vacation for me? Is this the size you want? Yes, I'm tiny. Thank you. I appreciate you double checking though. <laughs> we did go to this awesome thrift store that I wish I had more space in my bag because I possibly would have bought something from there just because it was so cool. And I want to go back really badly. We went to this Asian supermarket where I was able to get these eye masks that I should have bought more of. And then I think it was on Monday is when we traded games. So like I said, I had brought games and things specifically to trade with Stone because we had talked about doing that. So a lot of the stuff that I traded with him, I had no desire to hold on to for a lot of reasons, or I had doubles of. Like I had a double of this Mickey's Quest game. One of the first things I got, he had a stack of PS2 games that he had acquired. And he's like, you could take any of these, but I only was interested in this one, this Ratchet and Clank. I didn't realize until I got home and the case fell on the floor and it broke that there was actually this game behind it too. So now I have this game. He also had a stack of Nintendo games and I, you know, I could have taken all of them, but I didn't want all of them. But there was one that was there that I was like, that one. I would like that one. He's like, go ahead, take it. Paperboy. I played this game very limitedly, so I'm very excited to have Paperboy. This I wasn't expecting to be handed because I have it digitally, and I was content with having it digitally. When I got home and I realized that I had it, I was very emotional about it, especially seeing the two of them next to each other. And that is Chrono Cross. I have no desire to open this because like I said, I have it digitally and there's nothing inside the box besides the game cart. So there's no need for me to open it. I didn't realize how much it meant to me to have the actual physical copy. So the next thing I was not expecting was this. <laughs> I still have not opened it because I'm still in shock that I own it because we were seeing these at the expo selling for at least $300 if not more and this has never been opened before. So I'm, I'm really excited about this. The final thing in our trade happened on the last day because I was still unsure if I was doing this trade or not. I used to own a Nintendo Switch Lite. I never used it unless I was traveling and I even barely used it then. It was just sitting here collecting dust and I was just like, maybe one day I'll sell it. I don't know. I still have obviously everything that goes with it. We're now on like Tuesday. I'm playing Celeste. I realize I just don't play handheld like 
forever. And I was struggling playing Celeste. The thickness of the switch hurts my hands. And so I'm playing it, I'm playing it, and I'm like in pain. For a lot of Tuesday, we just hung out because it was pouring out. And I like turned and I looked at him. I was like, yeah, you're keeping this. The trade was for him to have that and for me to get this. This is an emulation machine. There is all sorts of stuff on it. There are all sorts of Game Boy games on here. So there's Game Boy, Dreamcast, uh, Super Nintendo, PlayStation, N64, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advanced. This is now gonna be my travel buddy. I was able to play this on the plane ride home and I was totally fine. I played Ham Taro Ham Ham Heartbreak, <laughs> in case you were wondering. <laughs> Getting back to the things that we did while I was there, we went to a brewery. We went to two breweries. The first one we got a flight, which was really good. We went to this pizza place that he really, really wanted me to try because he loves it. And let me tell you, the pizza was so so good. It was pepperoni pizza. We did a really nice long walk so I could see like more of the area and like downtown and everything like that. It was kind of low key on Tuesday because it was pouring. It was a lot of fun. He dropped me off at the airport at like about 9.30 at night and it was so easy to get through everything. Like it was a no brainer. I played on this while I was waiting, got on the, the red eye, went straight back to New York and then I was home. And that was my trip. Sorry, there are barely any clips and this was mainly just a talking video, but I know a lot of people were interested about what happened. But thank you all for watching. If you are new here and you like this kind of content, let me know. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. If you like this video, give it a like, leave a comment. If you wanna know when I post, put the, click the bell thing. I'm always awkward when I end a video. I'm awkward when I start a video. I'm awkward in the video. This is, this is awkward. <laughs> But thank you all for being here. I'll see you all next time.